a meeting call to order here at 6 p.m., our policy meeting. I want to thank everybody for joining us today, and thanks to um, to Kim and Kelly for put to, putting together a, an agenda for us to work on. Great. Um, so we have uh, two different items today, and I'm not sure which of you would like to take the lead here. Uh, but we'll start with number one bylaws of the board, series 9000, with our policy on suspension of policies, bylaws, or administrative regulations. Right. Um, so I'll take that one. I think it's relatively brief. Um, as all of you re will recall, at the last meeting, um, there was an agreement to pilot a new system where we would have one board meeting a month and one workshop a month. So in order to do that, um, we do have some bylaws, and I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, can everybody see that? Whoa. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Was it too big? <laughs> okay. Um, so this is your bylaw about regular meetings. And if you'll see down here at C, mm -hmm. normally the board shall schedule regular meetings on the second and fourth Wednesday of each month of the year, except during July and August, um, there will be one meeting each month if necessary. So rather than amend your bylaws to remove this or to change it, since you're running a pilot, my recommendation to you is that you alert the board for a two-thirds vote to suspend such part of this paragraph C as to say, um, and you can, you can choose which one, I'm not sure it matters, um, suspend the part that says either the fourth Wednesday or the second Wednesday. Um, and what you need to do is you simply need to state in the record at the next board meeting, the rationale and the duration. So the rationale would be in order to run a pilot to test running a regular meeting and a workshop each month. And the duration would be through the end of this school year, at which time if you decide to continue on, we can move to amend your bylaws formally for the next year. Or if you decide you don't want to continue with the pilot, we'll simply um, restore back to this language. A little bit of a formality, but there it is. And I, and I do know, um, in just uh, speaking uh, with Superintendent Walston, and I know uh, the board chair had um, requested that we bring this up for information at the upcoming board meeting, and then a vote to take place at the meeting thereafter, so that everyone could be aware of it if we put something in writing um, next meeting um, and just review it for information, and then the following meeting, an official vote could happen. So what so we that for from you today is sort of consensus amongst yourselves to make that recommendation to the board. And then at the board meeting, I think probably the easiest would be for one of you that's sitting here tonight to make the motion to suspend so much of bylaw, um, I don't see the number there, but that point C. Right. So much of it as refers to the fourth meeting, um, say, or if you want to do the second meeting, I don't think it matters. Um, to suspend so much of it is the fourth Wednesday. Um, and then when you go to the board meeting, having made that motion, you will need to state for the purposes of running the pilot to run a workshop for the duration of the end of the school year, and then um, a two thirds vote. So uh, can I just ask real quick, if yeah. we don't know whether or not, uh, I'm assuming that um, uh, the chair would make the decision about whether it be the second or the fourth Wednesday. So if we were to make a recommendation, you know, from this committee out to the board, um, would we have to get specific with the language right now as we're taking that motion or? So the 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 technical answer is it, no, you don't need to make that decision now. We can clear that up for the motion at the board on the next board meeting. Um, but also, I don't know if you picked one or the other and we held it on the other. I don't there's often not a remedy for these kind of things. It's, you know, really the point of taking one away. So I think, why don't you um, make the recommendation to do, to suspend either the second or the fourth, you can make that recommendation to the board. And then by the time we get to the board meeting, we can consult with Ralph and ask him if he has a preference. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Can I, uh, does anyone have any questions? Okay. Um, can I entertain a motion to make that recommendation to the board that we uh, ask for either the second or the fourth Wednesday? I make a motion. Thank you, Terry. May I have a second, please? I'll second that. Thank you, Bridget. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes.
Great. Can I, I just want to show one thing to you because I thought this was interesting um, and you might find it helpful as we go through the process, but this is, I think it's Hartford's schedule. And oh. what I liked about it is it's got the workshops listed and it's got the regular meetings listed and they publish this as their calendar. You can see right here where they put a note for the mid-year review and executive session, but I just thought it was a really nice way to kind of organize it. So um, we're not the only people to do this model, but um, I liked this format. We might think about something like that. Nice. Yeah, I think that's very clear and kind of lays out very directly for everybody, which is nice. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Kim. Okay. Um, I, sorry, Kate. No, you go ahead. Go ahead, okay. Kelly. I was gonna jump in for the next one. Um, so the next one is a is a two parter. Um, these are regulation changes that we're making. Um, so they uh, the regulations fall underneath policies, um, which detail out more specific district procedures. Um, so while the policy committee is not typically one to set regulations and vote on re regulations, we do want to make you aware of some systematic changes um, that we'd like to make, um, and then make a recommendation to review it with the full board. Um, so the first one, um, and I'll share my screen in a moment, but the first one speaks to um, the Danbury High School uh, graduation requirements. You guys know we spent a lot of time talking about the increases in graduation requirements um, to 25 credits. Um, and we've also spent time talking about how a student really needs to remain on track by passing all of their classes to remain on track for graduation um, and really has a, just a very limited window for a slip up or a miss of credit opportunities. Um, and so one of the things we spent a lot of time talking about is are there additional ways that we can afford uh, students credit um, for high school courses. Um, and there is one regulation change that we would like to make, and that would be to um, make the recommendation um, that we are afforded Level the opportunity up, to completed. grant credits for courses that are taken at the eighth grade level that are of high school equivalent. Um, so what I mean by that, and what we would like to see happen um, beginning next school year is for the Algebra One and the Spanish One curriculum, they are the same at the eighth grade level that they are at the ninth or 10th grade level if you were to take it in high school. And if a student is taking that course as an eighth grader, that they would receive the credit towards their high school graduation on their transcript. Um, the caveat to that, and it is in alignment with our with our current regulations, is that that while they would while they would gain the one credit for passing that class as an eighth grader, it would have no bearing on GPA or class rank, as we do not allow those things to happen outside of outside of Danbury High School. So they could, you know, knock off a graduation requirement towards Spanish, for example, um, and they would be, show and be reflected on their transcript that they passed that course and they receive credit in that course, but it would have no weight or bearing ultimately on their class rank or GPA because they are not currently a high school student. So I'll pause right there um, and see, and uh, I'm here to answer questions. Uh, Kara's also here to answer some questions, um, but we wanted to open it up for some discussion and see if there were questions, thoughts, feedback on that. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. Any questions? Bridget. Yes, thank you. So are we gonna include um, as part of that uh, the two years of Chinese at the West Side Middle School, because I know the kids who successfully complete year one, seventh grade and eighth grade go into year two, they're mandated, they can't start Chinese one at the high school, they have to go right into Chinese two. So would that be included as well? So, okay. Yeah. Yes. So, sure, sure. So, right now, um, we're looking to have world language as part of as part of this, okay. um, but we're also going to have a discussion. Yes, we're also going to have a discussion around sort of the sequencing and ordering in middle school. So, once um, you know, if the board approves, once we are able to change the regulations, we're then going to um, take a look at the world language sequencing and patterns because we want to be able to obviously create the opportunity at the other end for students in high school. When we increase the world language graduation requirement up to two credits, um, you know, probably about two years ago when we started to have this conversation around graduation requirements, we knew we wanted to revisit the middle school component because the state granted that, that flexibility. So um, in general, world language, which also includes French actually um, as well, would be included in, in, in this. And so um, once we're able to do this, then we're going to take a look at the sequencing in middle school so that um, we're offering the full equivalent um, so that students, yes, in, in Chinese, in French, and in Spanish would be able to to, to get that world language credit, a credit, at least one under their belt, 
on the way up to the high school. The other nice thing that it does is it allows a student um, who's really into the language to continue to advance all the way through um, upon graduation. So while it's great um, on the on one end to, to acquire that credit, um, it's also nice to be able to accelerate to accelerate a little bit, especially if there's a passion in, in that area. So, so that is nice and it opens up a little bit of room. Um, if not language, it opens up room in the student schedule for um, potentially maybe some academy electives that might, that they also may be interested. Um, so just because it um, it's a world language um, regulation doesn't mean it doesn't open up some other other things on the other end, which is which is part of why we're, we would like to pursue it because it right. creates a variety of opportunities for kids. And if I could just add, we are looking to start with, and thank you for asking the clarifying question. I use Spanish as that is probably the most common, um, but it would be any word language uh, course, but to start with the math and the world language and then look and see how it goes and possibly expand as we look to change, you know, some of our programming and courses, there may be another applicable course that comes in the future. And we would certainly update the board on that as well. Teresa, thank you, Terry. Kelly just answered my question. Thank you. <laughs> the Algebra so One just, course. I'm sorry, Teresa. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So it's just those two areas right now. Right. Right now. now, that's the that's the only thing that we can see on the you know foreseeable in the horizon right now that we think would match because we wanted to make sure that it's it is the same course taught, um, mm -hmm. and, and that it you know that there's crossover there. So right now, our world language courses and just like algebra one would be would fall into that into that bucket. So if anything else were to emerge, we would certainly circle back. Um, and again, we're looking at middle school sequencing in general around the world language, because we think that we can offer students a, a more streamlined approach. Wonderful. Thank you. Are there any other questions um, about the update to the regulation related to the credit earning for eighth graders? Move a slightly off topic question, if I may. Sure. Um, do we have any students at the middle school level who are going into the high school building for classes? On occasion, we have. We've had, for example, a student um, taking geometry, um, and we've usually lined it up to be a first period course. Um, you know, it is few and far between, um, but we do have some opportunities there as well. So um, it's not it's not unprecedented that we have not had a child take a college course as an, I'm sorry, a high school course, correct? <laughs> we have high schoolers that take college courses, but a high school level course at the middle school level. Okay. Thank you. Um, anyone else have any questions? Any non-committee members have any questions? All right. So, oh, go ahead, Gladys. Um, got on sort of late, but I think it's an excellent idea. Uh, my question is, you're going to start 23, 24 school year uh, with this, and um, hopefully we can get some type of feedback as to how it's working within the system. So uh, I just wanted to make a comment about that, okay? I, I think it's a great idea. I don't know all the ins and outs about it, but you people uh, have the degrees and have the knowledge to make sure that this works for our students. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Cooper. And yes, we are um, planning to implement it for the start of next school year. Um, and we can certainly bring back information to the board on the number of students who took the courses and those that have earned credit at the eighth grade level. I think that would be good information for you to have. Thank you. Awesome. So we're going to make a recommendation that this information be shared with the board. Is that correct? Correct. Just for information. Yep. All right. Uh, can I have a motion then if there are no other questions? I'd like to make a motion. Please. Uh, Bridget, do you want a second? Yes. Okay. So uh, moved by Michelle to make a recommendation to the board for review and seconded by Bridget. And then, um, Kate, if I could just go over one other part, there was a part two on that. Oh, sorry, I think, sorry, you know that? Kelly. No, 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 we needed to make them a separate recommendation. So no, thank you. Okay, um, so let me just one... do a quick oh, vote real quick. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. for procedure. Uh, all those in favor, please. Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion to approve. Aye. Sorry about that, I Kelly. I apologize, I did not mean to interject, I'm sorry. No problem, no um, problem at all. So the the second part to it, and we're not um, we're not ready to make any formal proposal just yet, um, but along the same lines in looking at what we're doing at both the middle and high school related um, to credits, course requirements, and so forth as we um, continue to uh, offer increased opportunities for students. Um, one of the one of the I'm sorry one of the regs that we're looking at 
is our uh, advanced placement courses. Um, and currently, um, if you, uh, there is a 10 day window um, for all courses at Danbury High School um, that you have to drop a course. Um, so for example, if you take an elective course or a math course and you determine within the first 10 days of the semester um, that it's not a match or a fit to you, you are allowed to change courses to uh, pick another course that might be more applicable. Um, that also applies to our advanced placement classes. Um, if after that 10 day window expires, you determine that you don't want to take the advanced placement course anymore, our current regulation, um, and it's in our it's linked to our course of study guide at the high school, um, requires you to receive a withdrawal while failing. So with a WF. Um, and so we feel that that is an equity issue uh, that we would like to look at uh, changing again for the fall. Um, uh, Kara has started um, along with a few members of her team on doing some, and as well as the guidance department on doing some investigations of how do other districts handle this, right, around the area. Um, our policy has been in place, um, I couldn't give you an exact date, but for as long as Kara or I can remember. Um, and so uh, we think it's time to relook at it, look at it in two parts. First is what should be the window that a child is allowed to withdraw out of the class? And it does have some implications on scheduling and availability. So it can't be a large window, um, but particularly related to the, um, uh, you know, to the advanced placement courses, should it be expanded by a week or so, possibly? So that's one question we have. And then the second question is, there are some opportunities where a student could, um, very similar to like how colleges do it, you could get just a W, which indicates that you are passing the class while you decided to withdraw. So it could be that, you know, maybe the third month of school rolls around and you're in an advanced placement calc course, and you just decide that the workload is too much, and you might decide to go in, uh, to an honors level or college prep, um, that you could withdraw out of that class. Let's say you had a C, it would just be reflected on your transcript as a W, not that you were failing the course while you withdraw. Through. Um, and so we do think that that's something in addition that we should look into. So we're trying to formalize exactly um, kind of what we think would meet the needs of, of um, all students to make it fair and equitable so that we still encourage students to take those courses. Um, but we also allow some latitude if a child, um, sometimes we find they bite off maybe a little bit more than they can chew. Um, and if they need to make those changes, that there's an accountability because what we don't want to see is over enrollment in the courses where kids just think they can come out at any time. Time, and that that could that could lead to a loss of credit. There may not be other courses available. It could have a trickle down effect, but also that we're allowing students and encouraging them to take the opportunity with some safeguards in place. Um, we do not feel that we should change the policy in the existing school. I'm sorry, the regulations in the existing school year. I use those words interchangeably, and I should not hear the regulations in the existing school year um, because we've been holding those those rules forward since the start of the year. But we think it's appropriate time to relook to revamp and put them in place similar to the credit attainment for the beginning of next school year. Um, so it's really more of an informational uh, update uh, for this group. Um, and we'd like to come back at the next meeting um, with some more formalized recommendations for the changes to our regulations. So I don't know, Kara, if there was anything additional that you wanted to add. No, Kelly, thank you. did a great job explaining all that. Um, yeah, we, we definitely feel that, you know, there, are, there might be some room um, to make our policy just a little bit, our regulation actually just a little bit um, less harsh. Um, you know, we've had an instance, uh, you know, at recently where we had a student who desperately wanted to withdraw, you know, from a course, um, and but had, you know, in an 80, um, and it just seemed that the WF didn't seem quite uh, appropriate uh, in that in that instance, and um, you know to act to help our students with college competitiveness and, and transcript analysis, that um, you know that could that could actually harm be harmful uh, to students during the college application process. So um, we need to balance. You know this is why we need to spend some time looking at it and checking out with um, all of our surrounding um, towns are also doing uh, with this. Um, there's also on the flip side to this, you know, a situation sometimes where students, um, so some of the reasons why the policies are so strict, sometimes students will load up in their senior year in AP courses, send transcripts out, and then peel back on those um, later. And so we have to be very careful that we're, you know, that we have integrity in our process and that, and that we, you know, that we're that we're guided by the by the right principles here. So um, we would like to do some due diligence, investigate what surrounding towns are doing, schools similar to ours in scale, um, and come back to this group with a recommendation. And I don't think there'll be sweeping changes, but simply just a little more grace and space 
for students to make those decisions without it doing um, undue harm. And Kate, if I, if I could just ask one of the things, and I certainly want to answer questions, but one of the things that we would like to see come out of this meeting today is an update to the to the board just for information on that we're having this conversation and currently uh, looking at tweaks to in this particular area. Thank you. Appreciate that direction. Um, Terry, go ahead. I appreciate the heads up. Uh, I'm really not for changing it right now. But I would be interested in hearing um, what you find out from other schools um, concerning this. Thank you for your efforts. Absolutely. Any other questions? Hi. Michelle? Yeah. Um, so would you be looking into how the Career Academy and how, how that program is going to be set up? Because I know we started talking about that and how, you know, you would change the academy because it would kind of be rolling in almost when we would be getting ready to get into the career academies, right? So is that going to be considered at this part of the process or? Right. So, so, um, and just to, just to reiterate that we're not looking to change it for this year, especially because then you have students who the, the rule would have applied for and then some to which it would not, and that would be a sticky situation. So we, we want to avoid that. But this would be for the for the next school year, um, and so that would be clear to all students going in what the what the regulations are. Um, and again, it's not really it's it's not exactly academy specific so much as it is um, that that the advanced placement courses carry um, a very high level of rigor, but also a high a higher weighted GPA factor. So um, it's really making sure that when the student takes those courses. So if you if you don't do well in an AP course. Um, and if you're failing, that GPA factor can really, really take a do a number on your overall GPA because it's weighted at a much higher weight than, say, a college prep course. And so, so, so while it's not specifically a, an academy focused um, uh, issue, it's really more about um, you know some some issues that we've been presented with internally that that really haven't sit well with us. Um, as a parent, as a, you know, as someone who's, who's counseling students, um, but then also, you know, making sure that our students are, have competitive college applications, but they're also still held accountable for, I signed up for this rigorous course, course that I'm going to take it. So it's really less about the academy, more just about uh, making sure that our, that our regulations are fair to students and that we provide enough space for them to hold, hold, hold them accountable, but also to not, um, to hurt them in, the, in that process. So this would be just to clarify specific to AP courses. AP and courses. Only AP courses that we're talking about here. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry Thank that you. was not clear. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I do have one other question. So in both of the cases that you guys talked about, the examples you talked about, um, where you know a student is maintaining a you know a C in the class or a B in the class, um, what about a case where the student is not maintaining that level grade? So, so they're, that would be failing part of, grade. Yeah, that would be part of it. Is one of the things that we're thinking, Kate, is to do a, just a, a straight withdrawal if you are passing the class, and then a withdrawal failure if you are not passing the class. So those are things, like I said, we're looking into right now, regardless of status of where you're at when you withdraw from the class. It's always counted as a withdrawal. You're well failing the WF on the transcript. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions about this? Terry? Just be clear, you're looking towards the 23, 24 year? That is correct. Yes. For any changes. Okay. Yeah, no changes. And I want to be very clear on that. No changes. Mid, we're year. more than halfway through the school year. Um, so we don't think it would be fair to all students um, as the rules been applied to you know many already. Um, so we this would be for the start of next school year. So it won't be retroactive. That's correct. It would go into place for the start of the 23, 24 school year. So it's weighted well going up, but take away the weight going down. <laughs> okay. Any other questions on this? Any questions from non-committee members? Okay, so I'm looking for a recommendation to include this with information for the next board meeting to let them know that this is uh, being worked on. May I have a motion for that, please? I'll make that motion. 
Thank you, Bridget. May I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Michelle. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Well, thank you very much, uh, Kelly, Kim, and Kara. Appreciate you guys you. Uh, helping us with this conversation tonight. Um, and um, as far as the horizon for our next policy meeting, um, I don't know if you guys have that together yet, um, but I just wanted to uh, check and see if there's anything we can we can and should expect from you. Um, so, Kim, if you want to jump in as well, um, right now we're still working on putting together for our next policy committee. Um, there are a couple additional policies that are still outstanding that we still need to add in per our CAVE audit. Um, and then, as we discussed at the last meeting, formally kind of working our way through uh, by series. So we're not quite there for the series yet, um, but a few outstanding policies. Um, one of them, for example, being something like our Title IX. We also have um, evaluations and supervision of coaches. Um, there's a couple additional policies from that CAVE audit that we still need to tighten up. Um, and then we would be um, ready to go for a review from A to Z, I should say, for for all of our series. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. There's a lot of um, help we need, like clerical support that we're having trouble pulling somebody to do it. So that's part of the issue too, is just getting the mass moved. So uh -huh. getting there. Is that something that Cabe offers support with, or is this outside of their realm? Outside. It's okay. internal. So um, we need to look at the Cabe updates and audits, along with some of our policies that date back to the 90s, um, and make sure that when we're bringing them all to you, that we're not missing any outstanding policy um, that's been in place you know, that hasn't been voted out. And so it's taking us quite a bit of time to go through that um, and working with some additional clerical support, as Kim mentioned, just to make sure that when we present a series to you, we're, we're presenting everything that we have on record. Um, you may vote to remove some policies, which you have, per, you know, purview to do um, that are no longer applicable. Um, and some, some are still going to need some significant updates. So before we go through series by series, um, we're trying to kind of plug some holes right now um, and then do a comprehensive review. That makes very good sense. And thank you for breaking that down for all of us so we have a, a good understanding alongside you. Terry, go ahead. Uh, for clerical help, if you need any help. Um, in the I could do evening, so I'm going back to work next week. So mm -hmm. if you need help, I could weekends or evenings <laughs> or early morning. Thank you. you that is very sweet to offer. <laughs> we, will, we will work through with our teams, uh, but we, we appreciate the offer. Yeah. Thanks, Teresa. All right. Does anyone have any other questions? I'm going to need help with soon. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds a lot now. more pleasant. I have to say. Um, does anyone else have any other questions or comments before we close out the meeting? All right. Seeing none, I will look for a motion to adjourn, please. So, Terry, so move. Nice. I move to. Sorry, to Bridget. Terry beat you to it. Do you want to okay. second that? Sure. Thank you. Second Seconded that. by Bridget. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned at 6 28 p.m. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And thank you again, Kelly, Kara, and Kim, for helping us.